Greetings and welcome friends, Mr. Wadi here. Uh, we are starting a new chapter. We are going to be learning all about the lines and the parallelness of them. And uh, today we're just going to, uh, like in most cases, we're going to be uh, starting a chapter with vocabulary, right? We're going to define things. And then later on, we're going to discover properties related to those things. Uh, so that's, that's today's just kind of like a little vocab thing. Can you give things a name? And then with those descriptions, we'll eventually discover all sorts of wonderful stuff. So let's see, core concept. Uh, parallel lines, skew lines, and parallel planes. Uh, two lines that do not intersect are either parallel or skew. Two options. Uh, two lines are parallel when they don't intersect and are coplanar. So you can see that lines M and N are parallel here. We denote parallel with this double bar, sort of like literally a symbol of two parallel lines. That's such a convenient symbol. I like it. Well, we we always uh, we always label it with a vertical pair of, of lines. Good call. So so you won't ever have like you know HTTP backslash backslash. No, you won't. Don't worry, it's cool. It's all names. Uh, li let's see, then the two lines are skew if they don't intersect. So that's a similarity between skew lines and parallel lines, except they are not coplanar. So line K and N uh, or M are neither coplanar and non-intersecting. All right, uh, also two planes that do not intersect are called parallel planes. There's no way for planes to be skew to one another because they would intersect, unless maybe we're talking about like some four-dimensional or multi-dimensional space beyond three dimensions. But, but really, please, come on. We'll wait until like linear algebra to do that. Uh, so uh, we also noticed that uh, the small little triangle arrows denote lines that are parallel to each other if you have lines multiple pairs of parallel lines uh i could just like my little tick marks right so any lines with a single arrow are parallel any lines with a double arrow are parallel to each other you can have triple arrows for parallel we've got a sneeze coming almost no all right tickle in the throat all right I, I was thinking there was going to be a good sneeze, and I was just going to, like, clear the air for, like, the audio to get the, try to pick it up, but no. All right. Uh, someday I'll have to tell you a sneeze story, but it is not this day. Uh, so let's see. Let's, uh, right, super easy. We're just, like, naming things today. It's easy day today. All right. So example uno. Uh, lines parallel to CD. All right. So here's CD. Containing point A. How many lines do that? Which, or let me ask this way, which lines contain point A? I think it's just uh, BA or AB. Uh, and I guess these are lines, so I'll have to indicate those with the line symbol. Uh, this one's parallel, but it does not contain point A. AG is not parallel. It would be skew. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, oh, I can't undo that. No, that's all right. I'll switch colors. All right. Lines skew to CD and containing point A. So AG. Any others? Uh, GA is the same line. A H. Yeah. That's a good one. Ah. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. I was thinking of, uh, what's the mage card in Hearthstone where, like, when you cast a spell, he gives you a fireball, and he always says, aha. Like, that's the, I don't know. Nah, he's like, Antonitis? Antonitis, I'm sorry. Uh, add it to the comments. Someone will, someone will let you know what's up. Uh, let's see, lines perpendicular to CD, wow, it's always CD there, and containing point A. Perpendicular to CD, what's that going to look like? I like how these colors have blended together, that's an excellent, excellent color. Da. Yep, uh, and there's only one, right, in this case. Uh, CB looks perpendicular but actually you're wow i can't even assume that 
Uh, same with this one looks perpendicular, but those wouldn't have contained A anyway. Uh, lines parallel or planes parallel to EFG. So let's see, EFG is this plane. So gentlemen, gentlemen, uh, which plane is parallel to... Uh, So, so playing uh, CDA, you're calling it? Yeah. All right. Uh, any three-letter name for the plane that's up top? All right. Good, good. Ooh, guys, some more postulates. Ah, oh, guys, add this. All right, friends, friends, calm down. All right, so... Uh, so, Ryan and Liam, uh, we've got two more postulates. What do postulates mean? What does that tell us about these? You just believe it, all right? Because I told you to believe it, all right? Don't you doubt me. Uh, we don't have to prove these are true, but hopefully you believe these are true because they're semi-obvious, even though we've had claims that some of the theorems seem very obvious as well. Uh, so, postulate, uh, this is the parallel postulate. If there is a line and a point not on the line, Okay, so like, I like this. Imagine a line. Imagine a point everywhere else or anywhere else other than that line. Then there's exactly one line through the point parallel to the given line. Excellent. Uh, all right, so yeah. So if there's a point and a line, there's only one. It's the Highlander, right? There can only be one line parallel through that point. And then the perpendicular postulate, very similar very aptly named postulate. Uh, it says if there's a line and a point not on the line. Yep, I can picture that. Uh, then there's exactly one line through the point uh, that is perpendicular to it. Let's see. Ooh. Ah, oh, guys, I like this problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have one on the test that will look somewhat like this. These little Google Maps images. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, yeah, it does kind of look like an airport. Well, aren't, uh, aren't runways just streets for planes? It's a driveway for planes? Okay, all right. Runways are the driveways of planes. No, like, like airport, not, not like a project runway. Uh, so, okay, name a pair of parallel lines. All right, friends, let's be careful here. Someone help me out. Name a pair of parallel lines. Chop, chop. Let's go. B, F, B, F and C, E. Agreed. B, F is parallel to C, E. Agreed. Uh, are there any others? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I don't agree. Oh, I'm so bad at my job. Wow. Why don't I agree, friends? It's all right. I didn't even hear it. But what was the, what was the burn? It was probably a good. One. <laughs> oh, I'm just realizing this now. That is pretty good. All right. Feel free to uh, ask uh, Josh to uh, add that line into his dubstep remix of Wadi lines. You got. You guys should start like time stamping my videos. Like, like okay, he started the video three minutes and thirty seconds in. That makes my day. I'm glad to hear. So guys, why are these not parallel going back to the topic? Or why can't I assume they're parallel? It's not labeled as parallel. So guys, guys, we're a little distracted today. Uh, oh, necesitamos a trabajar, mis amigos. So, uh, the only lines, ladies and gentlemen, come with me here. The, all right, Liam and Ryan, silencio, por favor, necesitamos a trabajar. We need to work. Name a pair of parallel lines. The only lines that are labeled as parallel are AD, or one of its equivalent names, and EF. No, but I can still describe a line. I mean, technically, there's... It doesn't matter. 
Right, so double arrow, that's the thing that indicates parallel to me. Uh, name a pair of perpendicular lines. All right, so DA, DA, is perpendicular uh, to BF. All right, I agree, because that's the only set that have a right angle labeled, or a perpendicular angle labeled. Yes, what's your question? Wait, wait, let one question at a time. Yes. BF is perpendicular. We don't know because this could have. Oh, oh, because of parallel. We will eventually be able to prove that, that because these are parallel, that this angle is going to be congruent to that angle. I think to, uh, Monday or Tuesday when we get back. Uh, we will be able to prove that. Good. Just one. Unless you're really good at not coming to school, you could make it two. Uh, F-E, question, comment? Oh, what? Liam, math with the wind. Man, I'm so bad at my job today. I'm, a, I'm ascribing the word today to it. For right now yeah i was thinking a was up here but you are right with the save so that means uh that is dm right there's an m m man wow with the save thank you sir thank you uh wow internet friends seriously you gotta you gotta add some comments i, I was gonna say give some likes to liam but that would be uh, helping me out and that's not fair yeah, just, yeah, drop, root for Liam in the comments is right. All right, here's a question. Is FE parallel to AC? FE parallel to AC? No, I agree, but why not? Well, here's the actual explanation. There uh, can only be one line parallel to EF through, uh, through M, right? By the parallel postulate, I already know this line is parallel to EF through M, so there cannot suddenly be like other lines that are somehow parallel that pass through that point. All right, so by the parallel, parallel postulate. So the parapost. Sounds like that'd be a cool Pokemon. I think that would be like the third evolution of Paras. How do you, how do you even pronounce that? I don't even know. Par Paras? Is he like, a, does he even evolve? Yeah, he's, I think he's like one of my favorite looking ones. He's like the little mushroom crab guy. Uh, a transversal line is a line that intersects paras, paras, para. Okay, here we go. Speaking of parasect, uh, a transversal is a line that intersects. Ryan, Liam, all right. Guys, I really need you to work today. This is not, this is not good. Uh, a transversal is a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at different points. So if I have two random lines, all right, a transversal will be a line that transverses both of them. All right, so it intersects with both of those lines. These lines could intersect or they could be parallel to each other. All right, I don't matter. Don't matter none. All right, so... And within those, there are now going to be a whole bunch of angles. Notice once I draw a transversal, now there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight angles formed by this situation. Uh, and we're going to have names for all of those. What? Yeah, I drew it all wobbly. Those two purple lines I intentionally didn't draw parallel. Uh, but eventually we'll talk about what happens when a transversal intersects parallel lines we'll have all sorts of things we can say. All right, so the first type of angles. So these are all just names. These are 
angle pair relationships, right? Uh, so this first type, these are called corresponding angles. Uh, the way I remember corresponding angles, imagine that these are both intersections like of roads in a city and corresponding angles. These ones are both kind of northeast uh, with respect to their given intersection. All right, they're in corresponding right parts of those intersections. Uh, so these are angles two and six are corresponding to one another. Uh, you could also say that this angle and this angle are corresponding to one another. Actually, I can't label those as congruent. That's my bad. But either way, you know which ones I'm talking about. Uh, so the transversal, by the way, was this line here. Uh, and here for this transversal, angles five and four are called alternate interior angles. Alternate because they're on different sides, right? They're on different sides of the transversal. One's on this side, one's on that side. And they're interior angles because they're both on the inside of these two uh, other lines. I was going to say parallel lines, but I don't know that yet. Uh, so four and five are alternate interior angles. I also could describe if I wanted to call this three and six. Three and six would be alternate interior angles to one another. All right. There were lots of names coming at us today. So we're going to we got to be picking up these terms that I'm dropping. All right, let's see. Keep cruising here. Come on, Mr. Wadi. All right, that's, that's pretty close. Those lined up almost. All right, you can also have alternate exterior angles. Notice that these ones are on, once again, alternate sides of the transversal, right? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Alternate sides of that, and they are on the outside uh, of these two lines, if I think about this as the exterior of those lines. Does that make sense? And then consecutive. Some books even call this same side interior angles. Uh, so those ones are interior, once again. So they're going to be on the inside of the two lines that are intersected by the transversal. And notice they're on the same side. Okay? Same side. They're consecutive interior angles. All right. So... Whole bunch of vocabulary just came at you. Let's see if we can apply it. And all we're doing is just naming stuff today. Right? Naming stuff or drawing pictures. Not bad. Example three. All right. Where are some corresponding angles? One and five. I guess I should label those with angle symbols. Yeah. Two and six are in corresponding positions. I like that. Angle two. Uh, three and these are on that's threes in the southwest corner. Yeah, so southwest corner would be seven. So angle three and angle seven. And then, yeah, and then the four and the eight. So those are all corresponding angles to one another. Right? They're in corresponding positions with regards to their intersections. All right, alternate interior angles. So alternate interior, here's my inter interior. Uh, I disagree. What's the only alternate interior angle with two? Yeah, two and seven. Uh, right, because they've got to be on alternate sides of the transversal. Uh, and then I've got four and five. Right, right? Alternate sides of the transversal, but they're in the interior. Uh, alternate exterior. So once again, the exterior is going to be, right, the outside of those two lines, which are not, like I said, not necessarily parallel. Uh, what do we spot? One and eight. Right? And three and six. And you could imagine that there could also have been consecutive exterior angles, but... We never name them. Yeah. They are the ones that are not to be named. Uh, but yeah, consecutive would have been like one and six. Uh, consecutive interior, you guys already got this. Which ones are the consec ints? You got it. Four and seven. Uh, 
they these those would have been like alter no nah, we don't have a name for the other than linear pair uh because those are alternate they're on different sides of the transversal but they this they have nothing to do with this intersection over here so all of these angle relationships are with regards to two intersections whereas like vertical angles and uh linear pair were with regards to a single intersection all right i think we're good all right let's get out of here bye internet friends i'm sorry i'm so bad at my job